Okay, uh, welcome everyone. And tonight uh, our presentation is by the architect of the creative program for UK City of Culture 2021. His overall responsibility for leading the creative and production team. And she joined the trust in July, 2018 from the Greater London Authority, where she led the mayor of London's cultural uh, placemaking team and conceived, designed and delivered the Mayor's London Borough of Culture competition. Um, as London 2012 creative programmer for the Olympics and Paralympics, uh, she led London's biggest ever outdoor festival, developing large-scale pop-up events in iconic locations around uh, London. Uh, amongst a large range of other events, she initiated and led a range of high-profile arts initiatives for the London Mayor, including Lumiere London 2016 and the Illuminated uh, River. I don't think that's the one where all the fire wings went off at the right time, that's a different one. Um, so we're welcoming tonight Shanine Bethina, Creative Director of Conti City uh, Culture Trust. Now, Shanine will be happy to answer questions at the end of her presentation, so um, save any till then. And it would be good if you all kept your microphones muted until John uh, selects you to speak, because it uh, can be very distracting for the uh, for the presenter. Right. So welcome, Shanine, and um, you're on. Thanks so much, Vince. Uh, nice to see you all uh, today. Uh, um, and I just thought what it might be useful for me to do is just to talk through um, kind of how we're hoping to do storytelling um, about uh, Coventry in 2021 and 2022. Um, I'm really happy to talk more and answer questions more broadly about the trust or the work of the trust. Uh, of course, I that might give us some focus in terms of, um, you know, how we're thinking about it. And I thought also maybe I can talk about some of the projects that we announced in October, just to give you a little bit of a sense of kind of how we're planning projects and programs, what communities we've already started working with, um, and hopefully give you a bit of an overview of some of those things. So I'm gonna dive straight in. So um, I did a presentation this time, or maybe a little bit earlier, um, last autumn, um, and we talked through the storyboard. And obviously this year, um, in light of the pandemic, um, we spent quite a bit of time in the summer with partners in the city, the region, and also with the government, just really reimagining what we could do with City of Culture, what dates we could think about, bearing in mind how hard it's been for us all to come together. Um, and what we agreed in the summer um, is that the best time to open our year of culture would be in May 2021. So in October, when we did our announcement, we announced that our opening day will be the 15th of May 2021, which is a Saturday. Um, and that we'll run the programme for just under a year um, until the 2nd of May 2022. So we still get a whole year of focus on the city and storytelling and great projects and hopefully ch uh, lots of chances for people um, to take part or, or come and see what's going on in Coventry. Um, the storyboard we've developed was really kind of inspired by our whole campaign around Coventry Moves. You've probably seen our film Coventry Moves, which we launched in the summer. And if you haven't, um, you can see it on our website. It's, it's short, it's only 40 seconds. Um, but really it's just, I suppose, encapsulating the kind of the rich history of, of Coventry and the fact that we've always been a city looking forwards, moving forwards, reimagining itself, reinventing itself, being pioneering, being innovative. Um, and really that's the moment that we wanted to capture now about this next phase of our, of our history um, and the new histories, hopefully, that we'll be creating in 2021 um, for everyone to look back on in years to come. Um, and so I suppose um, taking the um, bid that went into the judges back in 2017, taking some of those themes, 
we started to kind of explore with partners in the city, with communities, um, some of the storytelling we really wanted to do in, in 2021. So I'm just going to quickly run through our storyboard, which essentially is set out as a kind of a monthly, a series of monthly themes. Um, and as we move into 2021, you'll start to see how we use these themes to really capture uh, the way in which we want to present the programme. So as we start in May 21, we really want to talk about Coventry as a city of welcome and really set the context of the city and the people in the city, who we are, where we've come from, what makes us such an amazing city, such an innovative city, such a creative city, such a youthful city. Um, all of those things that we hold dear, we really want to set out our stall in this opening moment in May um, and use this time to really introduce people to the city. I think we all know that Coventry has a fantastic international reputation and, and, and people when we, when we go out and about in the world seem to know a lot about Coventry, its role in peace and reconciliation, its role in innovation and industry and research, its role in manufacturing and design. Um, but actually when we go out nationally and when we did the perceptions analysis of Coventry nationally, people didn't really know much about Coventry. They didn't have a negative perception, but they also didn't necessarily have a positive one. They just didn't really know. So I think there's a big job for us to do um, as we go into our city of culture to really just remind people about the rich history, heritage, but also what makes us tick, the identity of Coventry now in the 21st century, the DNA of the city. So that will be our opening month. Um, and then as we go into June, we really wanted to start talking about Coventry as a city of sanctuary and a place that has always embraced people, ideas, um, and really been thinking forwards about um, how we continue to evolve as communities, as people, as cities, um, as a world, um, and really start to open up some of the conversations around that in this month. As we go into July, we want to talk about Coventry as a city of harmony. Um, now, this was very much initially inspired by Coventry's um, very rich role in music um, and our heritage and our, and our history around music, but also, I think, more broadly about our role when it comes to uniting people, to being inclusive, to believing that, you know, that we are stronger together, um, tackling racism, tackling some of those big issues in society. Um, so really thinking about harmony in its widest possible sense. As we go into August, we really wanted to start thinking about freedom. And obviously Coventry has played such a role in promoting freedom and the freedom of people. Um, and this is a chance for us to spill out into the streets, have some fun in the summer, take over the place, show that um, cities and, and the places that we, are, that we live in, they're really for people. They're not so much for cars and, and, and other things. They're really places where people live and enjoy themselves. So it was really kind of celebrating freedom in all of its ways. As we go into September, we wanted to really start to consider Coventry's role in peace and specifically as the UK's only city of peace and reconciliation. Um, this is a month where well, there'll be quite a big focus on literature. We'll be talking a lot about um, our role in peace. Uh, we'll be working with poets um, and with writers um, and a variety of other storytellers um, to really have a rich kind of programme of work that really kind of celebrates this ongoing role that we play in the world. As we go into October, we really wanted to talk about um, Coventry's role as a utopian city, as a place of first, as a place of innovation, as a pioneering place, as a place where movement began. I can see uh, John in your backdrop, you've got a nice poster behind you that talks about this is the city where movement began. And really this is the month where 
we want to talk about our activism as a city. And when I say activism, I'm not talking about political activism. I suppose I'm talking more about social activism, community activism, you know, making, I suppose, fighting for our rights, um, putting justice at the center of everything we do um, and trying to make the world a better place for our children and our grandchildren. Um, so this is the month when we'll have all of those discussions. When we go into November, we'll be starting to really think about Coventry's role in the world um, and the role that we've always played um, in both welcoming people to the city from many countries all over the place, but also the role Coventry has and the place Coventry has in the hearts and minds of many international populations around the world and the difference that we've made. Um, in those friendships and partnerships and collaborations that we've built and promoted all over the world. As we go into December, we really want to start thinking about Coventry's role as a city of light. And I suppose this is about, um, it's a metaphor really, I suppose, thinking about where we've come from, reflecting on where we're at now and looking to the future but also really shining a light on our communities, our people, thinking about those maybe less fortunate um, and how we really come together as a city. Um, it's also Christmas um, and hopefully it's a time when we can literally light up the city um, and bring light to some of the dark corners um, around the place. As we go into January, um, we wanted to really shine a light on what it's like to be human in the city. Um, and this is about who we are now, I suppose, but also kind of the direction we're heading in. And, and, and what's interesting to me is our identity has been forged over the ages, um, but continues to forge, continues to be evolved. And the new communities coming in shape that as well. So really starting to um, share and, and, and look at who we are now and, and learn from each other um, and share that with um, people visiting the city. As we go into February, we really wanted to have a, a, a dialogue, I suppose, about Coventry as a city of hope. And probably this is one of the things people talk to me most about. Um, the fact that so many people come here to study, to work, to live, to escape from conflict, or to find a new future for themselves. Um, and this hope is really what brings us together and what unites us. Um, but also, what we, I suppose hope is the thing that gives us power as a city um, and, and really helps us to really think about um, where we're heading. So I think this, uh, this, this whole issue around hope, this whole discussion, should be very rich. And I think there's something here about really human rights, what that looks like in our city and, and, and kind of having a discussion about why that's important for us now, where that came from historically, but also where it's going to in the future. And probably things like Brexit uh, and the COVID pandemic bring that into quite um, focused spotlight as well. As we go into March, um, we really want to celebrate the amazing women uh, that have come from Coventry or that, that are known or associated with Coventry. People like Lady Godiva, myths, legends, artists, creatives, innovators, pioneers. Um, we've obviously got George Eliot, the amazing Delia Derbyshire, Mo Molum. There are so many women. Um, I haven't listed them all on here, um, but this is a chance to throw a spotlight onto the great women from the past, but also the everyday heroes, the women who still do amazing things every day in our city um, and really showcase some of the great initiatives that continue to be led um, now. And just to say that um, we will be celebrating men um, but we felt that in March, this was such an important moment, the city that gave the world Lady Godiva and everything that she'd stood for and everything that she still stands for, for our city. And then as we go into April, this is really our final month because we finish on the 2nd of May. Um, obviously, we don't really have a month of May in 2022, um, but this was really a chance 
to really have a focus on the environment, green futures, climate crisis. And I think as we move forward, this is the beginning of the next phase. Um, I know there's been discussions at the City Council about really thinking about um, Coventry as a national park city. Um, there's obviously a climate crisis going on that we really want to make sure that as a city we're engaging with. We really have, we will have thrown a big focus throughout our year of culture on sustainability and really making sure we lead by example so that we make sure, um, you know, that our carbon footprint is reduced wherever we can. We want to be the greenest city of culture um, yet. Um, and so we're trying and working really hard to make that happen. Um, but I think this is really about, you know, building on that rich history of, um, you know, the People's Party starting back in the 1970s that became the Green Party and everything that that stood for in terms of the concerns around population explosion and the impact that would have on the planet. So this is our time to really talk about that. So those are our kind of key themes, I suppose, as we go through the year. I thought um, if, you, if it's OK with you, I'll just carry on and then we can take some we can have a discussion and, and do some questions at the end. And I can come back to any of those slides if that's helpful. Um, so when we announced our programme in October, um, we set the programme out um, under five themes, I suppose. So the first one was the story of Coventry. So this was really um, what we did in October is we announced 15 events. And these were really teasers, uh, just to give people a sense of what was to come. This isn't the entire program. The entire program will consist of hundreds of things, um, but it was just to give a little bit of a flavor. Um, so I'll just talk these through so that you've got a bit of a sense of how we're doing it. So the first event was Co is Coventry Moves. This will be our big opening event on the 15th of May, 2021. We're building an event that will take place in every ward of the city. Um, it will happen on the day of the 15th of May, but then we hope that there will be events and installations that will continue to be in the city over the following week. So people can keep coming back to revisit some of the work, some of the images, some of the moments from that day. We really want this day to be the day when we tell the story of Coventry. So there'll be lots of images, references to our rich history, uh, to our manufacturing industry, to cars, to watches, to ribbons. Um, we'll be talking about the river, the way that the fact that the, um, uh, the river that runs through the city and under the city was the main reason for Coventry springing to life, I suppose. We'll be talking about Kofa's tree, uh, which in legend, I believe, is uh, the reason that Coventry came to be. Um, our rich um, industry around craft. Um, and then really, I suppose, going through history, talking about World War II and the Blitz and the whole Twin Cities revolution um, and bringing it all the way up to kind of date. So it's really, I suppose, a potted history of Coventry, but just to really remind people about some of those key moments in history, some of those pioneering moments, some of those amazing people as well. And joining us to do the storytelling will be some amazing artists from the city, musicians, theatre makers, choreographers, um, directors, people who can really bring this story to life. The other project that we announced is called The Tides Within Us. And this is a partnership with a creative studio called Marsh Marshmallow Laser Feast, who are um, a, a studio of creatives who particularly work in, I suppose, events uh, that take place in specific sites um, and encourage you to go on a journey. Um, this is a partnership with Historic Coventry Trust and the Warwickshire Wildlife Trust, and it will be set in the London Road Cemetery um, what we'll be doing is encouraging people to come in and explore the undergrowth of the cemetery and get people back to nature, but looking at the synergy between um, the natural environment and human nature and how the two things have so many similarities. So really helping people engage um, with that rich um, natural environment that we live in 
um, as we as we attempt to really have an open a discussion about the environment and climate crisis um, and encourage people to really um, get involved through their hearts and minds in terms of the work that needs to be done. This should be an amazing event. It will run for about three months in the London Road Cemetery. It's for all the family. It will be fun and playful. You'll be able to navigate your way through the cemetery and really explore some of the flora and fauna. Um, and hopefully for people that have never been to the cemetery, it's a chance to really explore some of the great history, um, symbolism, um, and some of the iconic people that are buried there as well. The second part of the programme that we announced was our investment in local artists and the local sector. So we talked about our investment in the Coventry Biennial. So in autumn 21, it will be the third Coventry Biennial. Um, Ryan, who leads the programme, will be throwing a focus onto all of the art movements that have come from Coventry and the West Midlands to really throw a spotlight onto the role that we have played as a city historically um, in the way that art and visual art has evolved in our country and globally. Should be an amazing um, festival. Um, really looking forward to working with Ryan on it. And obviously we'll also be hosting some amazing artists from all over the world. Um, we'll also be hosting the Turner Prize, which as you may know, um, is run by the Tate. Um, every second year, they bring the Turner Prize out of London to a regional city. This will be the first time it's come into the West Midlands. Um, but more than anything, I think for me, it's about really investing in the Herbert as a museum and gallery. One of their ambitions is to be seen as a centre for contemporary art. And so in the future, as well as having an amazing museum in the building, they really want to be part of a national network that has a huge contemporary art um, kind of uh, exhibition, rolling exhibition throughout the year. It's an incredible moment for the city. Um, so we'll be, we'll be hosting the four shortlisted um, exhibitions. And then in December 21, there'll be um, a dinner uh, at the cathedral probably, um, which will be televised on the BBC where the winner of the Turner Prize 2021 will be announced. The third project we've been developing is called Rivers of the World. This is a project with the Thames uh, Festival um, Trust um, and also with the British Council. It's a project that connects classrooms um, classrooms in Coventry with classrooms in Tanzania in Africa and for the first time in the history of this project we'll be working with um, uh, special educational needs schools, um, 10 of them across Coventry and Warwickshire, um, to create artwork that will be shown in London um, and then will come to Coventry as part of the biennial. It's an amazing project, a great way to develop the talent and creativity of young people in the city. Um, and we're really excited to be working with those 10 schools. And then the fourth project we announced was Cast Away by Highly Sprung. Highly Sprung, um, you may have heard of them. They're a locally based company. They generally work outdoors. Um, they tour to outdoor festivals all over the UK, and they're gonna be creating this project for the canals and rivers. Um, it's been co-commissioned by the Canals and Rivers Trust, and it will tour to canals and rivers across the UK after August uh, 2021 when it opens in Coventry. Um, they really want to throw a spotlight onto environmental issues um, and even as a landlocked city, um, really to show the impact that we, can, we have on the oceans in terms of pollution. Um, it's a fantastic project um, and they'll be starting to develop that in the coming months. The third area of the programme is called Celebrating Our Difference. Um, so this is really a chance for us to show some of the different projects that we're working on across communities to really just show the rich array of creativity and, and partnerships um, in the city. So the first project we announced was with the Belgrade Theatre who were developing a UK Asian film festival, working with um, talent from our Asian communities and the city, um, but also bringing incredible talent into the film festival. So bringing in films and filmmakers um, to open conversations about some really interesting contemporary topics. Um, and again, commissioning some new films from communities here. The second project is called The Walk. 
This is a project with a company called Good Chance Theatre, who do a lot of work in refugee camps across Europe. Um, they are building a three meter high puppet of a Syrian girl. And that puppet is gonna walk, walk across Europe from the Turkish Syrian border, um, landing in Coventry on the 30th of June, um, when we hope to give her an incredible welcome in our month of sanctuary, when we really throw a spotlight onto Coventry's role in welcoming unaccompanied children um, to the city and the role that we've played in that subject in, in many, year, many recent years. It should be a fantastic project and a way for all citizens in Coventry to really kind of get involved um, and, uh, and show, show what that Coventry welcome really looks like. The third project is called Theatre of Wandering. Um, and this is a project that we've been developing with the Care Home Network in Coventry, really throwing a spotlight onto Alzheimer's um, and what it's like to live with Alzheimer's as an older person. Um, we're working with a Japanese company called Theatre Oibokshi. They do a lot of work with older people, particularly reminiscence projects. Um, and they're working with another national company called Entelechi. This should be a really lovely project where we really work with older people in the city to tell their stories in a playful way in different locations across the city. Um, it's very much co-created with older people from Coventry. So very much their stories, um, but shaped um, with the theatre makers um, that we're working with. And the final project that we announced on this programme is called Faith. So this is a project we're developing with faith leaders in the city um, and the Sacred Mile Network. Um, I think we've got all of the major religions um, covered in our Sacred Mile. Um, and so this is really a chance to explore notions of faith in the 21st century and what that looks like for people living here in the city. Um, it's a really strong collaboration with communities, particularly in the north of the city but a chance to really engage in some very strong themes. And brilliantly, we're now working with Songs of Praise uh, from the BBC, who are also gonna come and film live in the city on the same weekend as that project. We're delighted to be work working with the Royal Shakespeare Company on this project. Um, as you know, they're one of the leading theatre companies in the world. Um, it's an absolute one-off event that will never be repeated. So quite an extraordinary moment, I hope, for the city. The fourth area of the programme is called City Voices. And this was really about how we start to put the voices of people from the city into the programme and at the centre of the programme. And so we talked about two specific projects that we're now moving forward with. One of them is called Contain Strong Language. So this is a programme with the BBC. It will be a weekend of poetry, spoken word and live performance that will take place in venues across the city from the Belgrade to the Albany to our festival hub. Um, and it will also be broadcast on Radio 1, Radio 2 and Radio 3. This is a chance to really throw a spotlight onto talent in the city uh, and to really give platforms for that talent, um, but also to flag some, you know, bring some other talent into the city to really complement what we have here in Coventry. Um, and the other project is Small Bells Ring. This is another project that we're developing in the canal basin and for the five and a half miles of the canal. Um, we've commissioned um, Studio Morrison, who are based in the region, um, to create a fantastic canal boat, which is a piece of public art in its own right. Um, and on that canal boat will be a library of short stories. And we're working closely with the Coventry Library Service to curate all of the short stories from the libraries in Coventry and bring them onto the canal boat so that people can come in and read some of the short stories. Um, and also we'll be commissioning some new short stories from writers in the city that will feature on the canal boat. The boat will travel along the canals, um, the canal and will stop at various points. Um, there'll be live events, there'll be a chance to engage um, in different moments and activities. Um, should be an amazing project. And then just finally, our, uh, the final part of the programme that we announced in October was about our role as a music city. 
Um, and so we really wanted to reflect on some of the great uh, music tradition we've had in the city. And as I say, this is just scratching the surface of what we'll do, but these were the two projects we announced. So the first one was to welcome home Terry Hall, the lead singer of the specials. Um, he's going to come and curate a weekend at our festival hub. Um, where he's going to invite some of his friends from the music industry, amazing singers and bands, some incredible names, to come and work with oh, singers yes. and bands based in Coventry. So a real chance to connect the local talent from the city with some international talent. It would be a really extraordinary programme. And also Terry is very engaged um, in campaigning for men's mental health. So we'll be doing a lot of work with him to really get men talking about issues around mental health and getting conversations going for that. The final project is the CVX Festival. This is a project that we've been developing with the Positive Youth Foundation and also with our Arts Against Violence Network. We're very, we're very keen to work with young people in the city who are most at risk, I suppose, of getting involved in um, violence or gangs or different types of crime um, and really looking at positive opportunities for them. So we're developing this festival which will be curated, produced and delivered by young people from the city. And J1, who is a rapper, uh, very well known now um, from Coventry, is going to come in and mentor those young people to really give them the best possible experience and make sure that um, we really think about the role that arts and culture can play in tackling some of these big issues that young people in the city are facing. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a view of some of the things um, that we're doing, a bit of an overview of the themes that we'll be exploring, some of the projects we've announced. Obviously, there's a huge amount more to come. Our next announcement will be on the 28th of January, um, when we're hoping to announce a large part of our programme. Um, so you'll see a much wider sense of how that programme is going to kind of look as we go into 2021, as well as many opportunities that will be coming uh, for people in the city to get involved. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now so that we can uh, chat to each other. Well, thank you very much, Shadeen. Quite, uh, quite a few things for us to think about there. Um, I guess while everyone else is thinking and sharpening their pencils and hopefully not their knives, I'll, um, I'll ask the first one. Um, the, the, because of our demographic, which I think you understand uh, in this group, um, I pick up, a, and, and from other Coventry groups too, uh, I pick up a, a lot of concern that they don't think there's going to be any recognition of the hard work uh, that are now dwindling generation uh, community uh, carried out under frequently desperate conditions uh, to rebuild this city after the devastation of World War II. I mean, I wasn't around at the time, but I certainly played in the rubble. Um, perhaps you could take this opportunity to allay some of these fears that there will be recognition given to those people and the the work they put in to rebuild and to make this city a welcoming city. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose there's a few things I want to say. One is that everything that we are doing is absolutely rooted in the history and the heritage of our city. As you can see from the storyboard, we're trying to represent the story of the city as much as we can. But this moment is to help people understand also who we are now. So there's a, there's a balance to be found between those two things. The other thing to say is that, that whilst the City of Culture Trust have been asked to lead this programme, obviously there are many others in the city who are going to be delivering programmes in this year. And one of the key players is the Historic Co Coventry Trust. Um, they're doing a huge amount um, and, and they've got, um, you know, they're doing a big fundraising campaign at the moment because they've got a big programme of work they're doing with the Heritage Park down at Charter House, all the investment that's going in there to reopen that. 
Uh, they're going to be doing a lot of storytelling. They're going to be doing a lot of work to tell stories of some of the amazing people at the London Road Cemetery who are buried there. You know, in a way that the, the mantra is with them to do a lot of that historic storytelling. We've also got a big destination management program which will be doing a lot of the storytelling um, for visitors coming to the city to learn about the city and to learn about the rich history of the city. We're also working with the city council who are, who are gonna be leading a big transport innovation showcase to really focus on the transport heritage of the city, obviously working in partnership with the Transport Museum and also the British Motor Museum. Um, and we're working with Motorfest as well um, as part of the festival hub. So there's a number of partnerships that are going on through the city. We've also got a relationship with organizations like Reba, where we're gonna be doing a lot of storytelling about the architecture of the city. Um, there's gonna be a big exhibition at the Draper's Bar, um, which has been taken over by Historic Coventry, where they're gonna have an exhibition of the kind of emerging architectural developments that have happened in the city. And that's being led as a partnership between ourselves, the City Council, Historic Coventry and Coventry University. So there's quite a lot of work around that. Um, and then obviously through all of the work we do, uh, there's a lot of storytelling about people people and communities and our collaborative city team are working on the ground in communities to make sure that we are telling the stories that everybody wants to tell. So, you know, we've got four, five producers actually based in different parts of the city, you know, really trying to kind of look at some of the, the stories that, and, 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 the, and the activities that people want to highlight. So we're trying to cover it as much as we can. Um, whilst also being faithful to other parts of the, the, the city's story. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, could people put um, something in the chat if they want to ask a question and I'll try and do it in a structured way, or if that's too much, put your thumb up at the uh, reactions button at the bottom. Um, does anyone want to ask the first question? The second question, sorry. Is that John Greatrix? You need to unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. Hi. Um, I see, we're, so we're actually starting on May the 15th, which is a Saturday. Um, fortunately, that's a fortnight after May the 1st, which is the 170th anniversary of the opening of the uh, Great Exhibition in Hyde Park. So I'd like you to consider, and I'm happy to organize this, uh, a small event, probably helping using Highly Sprung, uh, but bringing something from Hyde Park from May the 1st up the Grand Union Canal to the Canal Basin, uh, ready for, uh, May, for May the 15th. Obviously, Joseph Paxton uh, related, um, as he was the MP for Coventry. Uh, in fact, he was the first basically uh, Green MP. Uh, he's a mixture of Tory and Liberal, and if you take uh, Blue Tory and Yellow Liberal and mix them together, you end up with Green. And he designed a marvellous greenhouse, and I'm really pleased to see that we're going to end the uh, year uh, on a green theme. Uh, I'd be grateful if you could take that. I, I really want to sort this out with the Hyde Park authorities and with the London Mayor as soon as possible, uh, ho hopefully later this week. I'd really like to have a one-to-one -one chat with you, uh, Shinin, about this. And don't forget, also next year is the opening in Dubai in October of the uh, latest World Expo, um, of which... Paxton's Crystal Palace was the first World Expo and there is a major tie-up that we can ha be having that. It's not only things that people can come to Coventry to see, but what Coventry can take out to the world. I really want to have a one-to-one -one chat with you, please, as soon as possible. Thank you. Thanks, John. Okay. Um, David West and then uh, Sherry. You need to unmute yourself. Thank you. We can't hear you, David. Oh, 
David's question was, are the BBC filming the CSL and are the venues decided? Um, you're talking about contain strong language, I think. Um, so the BBC will be broadcasting for radio on Radio 1, Radio 2, Radio 3. They won't be filming live. Um, we are what we are doing though David is we are currently looking at live streaming um, and whether we'll be able to incorporate you know what we can incorporate into the program around live streaming so um, and we're talking to the BBC about that we've got a really brilliant partnership with the BBC they're going to be covering um, a lot of what we do um, through news channels through things like the one show and various other kind of journals they have on TV um, they're also going to have a studio at our festival hub so they can interview people, artists um, and kind of talk about, you know, Coventry. Um, they're also, we're also um, creating some new um, documentary and broadcast pieces. So there's going to be a new broadcast piece about the making, the building of the new cathedral. There's going to be a broadcast piece called Made in Coventry, which is about the car industry. Um, and there's a broadcast piece about Delia Derbyshire. Um, we're also looking at a project with Ira, uh, about Ira Aldridge and his role as the first black theatre director in the UK. Um, and we've got a, we're in a discussion at the moment about two-tone and doing some kind of programme inspired by the two-tone label and the two-tone movement that came out of the label. So there's a number of those uh, projects that are in, in situ right now. Um, but for Contain Strong Language, the focus will be radio. David's also asking, where is the festival hub? Ah, okay, yeah, I didn't talk about that, did I? Um, so opposite the council house, um, in the old um, location of CC4, so opposite Draper's Bar, if you like, um, you'll have noticed that that whole area has been demolished recently. There's just one building, uh, listed building that's still there. Um, but the area behind that, the flat area, Coventry University are allowing us to use that for our festival hub. So we'll be building, um, I suppose it's like a garden, like a festival garden with kind of food and, and kind of bars and there'll be a couple of um, amazing venues put like temporary venues there with entertainment um, there'll be some pop-up music um, and that will open in May and run through until um, I think it closes around the 2nd of October so it's a kind of a summer festival hub and within that there'll be a BBC studio um, on site um, as part of the program. Brilliant. Next question is from Sherry. You need to unmute yourself, Sherry. Good evening, everyone, and um, thanks, Shani, for that brilliant induction. Uh, my question is: Is there anything happening for the opening, the hundredth year, the hundredth year opening of the War Memorial Park? Hi, Sherry. Um, nice to see you. Um, yeah, so uh, Ellen, who's my um, producer, who works uh, across the southwest of Coventry, um, and also Amanda, who is our Green Futures program manager, have both been working really closely with the Friends of the War Memorial Park, um, both to support them with programs that they want to develop, but also to look at what we can do to add value or, or to support that. So that's all in development right now. But yes, we're looking at something for July 2021. I think also the City Council are still planning um, for the Godiva Festival to happen, maybe in September, I think. Um, and there'll be some other events happening in that park. Um, I think um, as part of the Green Futures programme, um, there's quite a few ideas in situ. We're just waiting for the funding to come through so that we can confirm those. We do have a few um, members of the Friends of the War Memorial Park here tonight. If any of them would like to say anything, put your thumb up if you do. No. No, they don't want to say it. Oh, Peter, do you want to say something? Well, I was, I was just going to reinforce that, that message that there's a, there's a lot that, um, you know, we in the Friends and our little centenary group uh, are, are trying to put together at the moment. And I think um, hopefully it will be a very big year for the park and what it represents. Uh, and the fact that it's over this past 
year has been an astonishing, almost lifesaver for the city. It's just incredible the number of people that have uh, that have used the park and constantly yeah. doing so, um, and it's really coming to its own. And hopefully next year will be a great year for the park. Brilliant. You seem to be running low on questions. Does anyone have a question? Just to also add that in 2022, it's the anniversary of the cathedral. So we've also been working with the Dean to look at kind of what their program's gonna be in 22. Um, it's, it's a period of anniversaries, I think. So uh, we'll be looking at a number of potential projects. Uh, Geraldine. Geraldine. Yeah, yeah. I, I just wondered who's going to be advising on 20th century architecture because the Historic Coventry Trust are not experts on 20th century architecture. Hi, Geraldine. Um, so uh, we're working with Reba. Um, they've come on board as a partner with us. Um, and I know that we have had a meeting with 20th Century Society. Um, so we'll be taking that forward in the coming month. Um, there, there is quite a big focus on it and actually the exhibition that um, will be at Draper's Hall is the whole history of architecture it's, it's, and a lot of that focus will be on 20th century so we're having a, a look at that we're trying to also um, we, we've got another project with the British Council called Prototype City which is also inspired by 20th century design so that that will always that will also be part of that conversation I can I can share more with you in the new year Okay, thank you. Samantha, or whoever you are. Uh, hi, I'm a visitor, so hello to everybody from the Coventry Society. Uh, I'm a member of a, a fairly almost lapsed, but very long-standing arts organisation in Coventry, and we have a fairly large artwork, which we have spent a lot of money restoring, dating from the early 1960s, and we would actually like to display that too in the City of Culture in advance of it finding a permanent home. Would uh, you be interested in that kind of thing? And if so, do I just sort of get in touch with you? Hi, Samantha. Is it, is it, a, um, is it public art or is it, is it for indoors or is it for outdoors? Uh, indoors. It's an indoor artwork. Okay. I think the best thing we can do is um, we can pick up offline, but I think probably um, we don't have any indoor spaces per se. Um, so probably you would need to talk to um, the Herbert or the Mead, who are the two main galleries, but there's also art space who work across all of the visual arts curators in the city and there may be other spaces as well but I'm really happy to put you in contact with people. I know Mark's here from Photo Archive Miners and he's also part of the, um, the Visual Arts Forum um, so we can maybe put you in touch with them and, and look at where those opportunities are. Okay that would be very good. Uh, we do have to, we've had them restored, but we haven't actually had them ready to hang yet they haven't got any mountings um and this is going to take sort of a bit more than we have is there any chance of any funding for that it would depend kind of um on on kind of who i suppose it kind of depends on what the project is it's a difficult one to answer um there is funding available um uh through our partners people like arts council england hlf you know, they all have um, funding. There's also funding at Heart of England, um, which is more, I suppose the Heart of England funding is more for uh, community-based work. So it may not be appropriate for what you're talking about. Um, uh, we're not a funder per se at the City of Culture Trust. We're a producing organization. Um, but certainly I'm sure if you talk to some of those arts organizations, 
and we understand a bit more, we can we can talk to you. Yeah, one, okay. one thing I would mention to you that you might be interested in and we could definitely uh, follow up on is one of the projects that we're developing and, and we haven't announced it yet, so uh, I'm telling you this confidentially, um, is that we're working with um, the Business Improvement District to look at creating a whole series of um, artworks in windows across the city center. Um, and this is a partnership with Reba actually. Um, oh. What we want to do is like take over windows and, and, and really work with local and regional artists, but also community arts groups as well, and do extraordinary things in windows throughout the year. And in a way it gives us those indoor kind of curated spaces that we, we don't have access to because we don't manage any galleries or venues, so as a trust. Um, so that might be another option for you, Samantha, that I'd be really happy to put you in touch with my visual arts producer and you could have a discussion with her. Samantha, oh. are you able to share with us what we're talking about or is it secret? Um, yes, it, it used, well, the, the organisation is the Umbrella Club. I suppose some of you may well know of it <laughs> from the years of when it was very active in the 60s. Um, it used to hang in the coffee bar in Queen Victoria Road. So it basically was done as a piece of sort of community art specifically for one organization which had about 400 members at the time um, and they've been various places they were hung actually at spawn end in the spawn end arches uh coco building so yes um over the years of course they got filthy with coffee bars being full of smokers so we've had them thoroughly restored just haven't mounted them yet because they're actually in four pieces uh, it's oil on board and they depict a park scene with lots and lots of different things going on you could imagine it was the memorial park but it could be a park anywhere actually because there's a zoological area and lots of things that we don't have actually at the memorial park um, but I think maybe that was in the artist's mind. It was done by four artists from Coventry. Um, I can't reel the names off right now, sorry. Uh, but they were very active in the 60s. Right. Thank you very much. Um, Coventry Arts Collective, did you want to come in now? Need to unmute yourself. <laughs> Hello. We're, absolutely, we're fascinated by the history. What's the Umbrella Club? We've never heard of it. Uh, well, that's because we're all, the organisers are all very old and we don't really do anything anymore. <laughs> um, it was a very active group in, in the, started in 55 and um, it's been going really until about, well, maybe two years ago, I'll say. Um, our final big fling was we had a uh, legacy to distribute among arts groups in the city. So we spent a lot of time and energy uh, finding groups that would benefit from small um, grant and distributing it. Um, and we did, as I say, give ourselves a little bit of money for this mural because we didn't think it should be chucked away. It should be made beautiful again and put on show somewhere. So basically it was a very wide ranging arts group and we remained wide ranging. But as I say, it's very difficult to recruit young people or even middle-aged people these days. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of other groups, we're falling on hard times as regards people to run the organization. Thank well, you. Mark, Mark did that's really what? beautiful because um, what what we like to do is um, what what we're doing. I'm I'm from Coventry as well, um, and we um, we 
We're really interested in the stories and making sure that the stories are told. Um, we're, we're not all these big singing, dancing, glittery events that, that sh you know, that Shalee's talking about. We're, we're, we're a grassroots organisation and we're going to be working, doing some, a couple of small projects where we want to, to make sure that these, these stories are told. We're supported by City of Culture and uh, we're, we're really interested in, in making sure these stories come out. So we, we're definitely going to have to meet up and talk absolutely. about this. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, that would be good. Yeah, okay. thank you very much. Mark, Mark Cook, do you want to come in on this? Do I have to? <laughs> um, yeah. That's what I was putting. That's what I'm trying not to create myself more work than uh, than I can chew. Um, we're, it's uh, here. <laughs> yeah, we, we're. Um, I mentioned in the chat that um, I'm aware of photographs that uh, Richard Sadler took of the Umbrella Club activity in Little Park Street. Um, oh yes, the goons at the opening night. I think it was. Um, we, that's connected with one of the things we're going to be doing during the year, which is um, some of Richard Sadler's photography of the shift between post-war and the new Coventry. So um, certainly it's a, it's a subject I'm, I'm interested in. I'm not going to offer to try and help rehouse a piece of art because that's just not what I do, but certainly happy to join in on conversations that people have about this. Um, or even you know, people want to use my, my email address to contact through, happy to do that. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Uh, Thanks, Mark. David Fry, do you want to ask a question or say something? <laughs> yes. Oh, well, I feel slightly embarrassed about raising this matter, actually, but I, I thought I'd better had done. It's more a sort of grumpy old man point in the uh, general context of what we've been talking about. But I, I, right from the beginning, I've struggled with the, um, the, the, the graphics, some of the graphics and the, well, the text, really, and the presentations that are on the website and uh, that I've, I've seen in various meetings, because um, that um, you're... you're committed to the upper case and that's fine with with sort of small um, groups of text but when you're dealing with sort of whole lines of text it's not so easy to read but maybe that is just me but I, I thought I'd uh, raise it now rather than sort of keeping quiet. I can pass it on to our uh, our marketing team I think I think that's our brand agency that's the um that that's part of the brand design that they've given to us yeah um but i know that we're trying to make sure it is as accessible as possible so we're trying to look at different formats so i can pass it on and see what solutions they're looking at thank you jerry do you want to come back in on on this no Sherry Edgar, did you want to say something about uh, the Godiva bar and a massive bikers group? No. Oh, no. Um, I think me and David West was just having a, a private message in saying, uh, oh, right. you know, just on that road there, you know, opposite Drapers and where the yeah. new temporary space would be for all the events that are happening, where the BBC would be based, is the good old, what was known, I think, I'm not um, that um not old enough to know everything but um it was the Godiva bar wasn't it and then then uh, known as the dive bar and that's where the bikers groups would would hang out it was a notorious place and I know my dad's got some drawings at home of uh, people hanging out at the dive bar and it's got many stories to, t to tell <laughs> I think my okay. auntie used to be the manager there so yeah there's lots of lots of history there okay uh tim clay we can't see you but if you want to ask a question yeah i i'm interested in allsley park it's the second green flag park in uh, in the city and we're keen to do stuff um, in the wall garden where we've got a very active group we've got a good history and we'd like to put on a show um What's our way forward? So if you, um, what I can do is I'll put it in the chat actually. We've got producers who are, who are based in different um, geographical parts of the city. So probably for you, that's gonna be Northwest. Um, so I can put you in touch with Jackie. She's our Northwest producer. 
um, and just say hi to her and, and, and share any ideas. I know there is one event that has just got funding that is going to be happening called the Olsley Silas. Um, and that's uh, they've just literally got their Arts Council funding. So I know that's going to be happening in the park. Um, and it's going to be a big community event, Tim. So I can also put you in touch with um, Alan Pollock, who's going to be um, directing that show, if, if you're interested. Great, thank you. I've no idea how I put my face on. I appear to be a blank. <laughs> click, click on video, there you go. bottom left. Uh, <laughs> Graham bottom and left. Graham and Janice. Um, yeah. um, just wondered if anyone's thought about mentioning the old Coventry Theatre and all the magnificent, really famous people we had there in the olden days. That's it. Um, at the moment, we're, I suppose we, we haven't focused on it too much. We're focusing probably a bit more on the story of Ira Aldridge rather than the whole story. That doesn't mean it won't get told. It's just um, a little input, really. Yeah, no, I think I think it's very interesting. And um, I think that we will, we, we will probably find that some of that information comes out. Um, I'll make a note about it, actually, Janice. And, and Well, it was, um, I remember seeing Margot Fontaine, Elton amazing. John, Elkie Brooks, I mean, really, up there people incredible people yeah 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 i mean it's interesting theater in in the city there's such a rich history so many people have come through whether it's coventry theater or the belgrade yes, yeah. um, and the belgrade you know invented theater and education i mean yeah. we wouldn't have theater and education if the belgrade hadn't created it so there's lots of um stuff for us to talk about yeah. um so yeah i'll make a note of that though Thank just you. a throwaway point yeah Thank you. Uh, David West, let's try again, shall we? As silent as ever. <laughs> I'll, try, I'll read what David wrote in the chat. Uh, Tides within us, just at London Road Cemetery or Charterhouse 2. Um, it's mainly at London Road Cemetery. I think there is an, uh, uh, an ambition that part of the project, it might start or end at Charter House. There is some kind of connection that we're just exploring. The show is still being made, so, um, uh, but we're talking to Historic Coventry about both locations and how we might use both. Um, the other thing, just so that you know that we're exploring is, is, is how we work at Charter House, both by the river down on the grass, but also in the walled garden of Charter House and to support some of the events that Historic Coventry want to run there. So we're in a conversation with them about that as well. Um, in an earlier comment, David also said there is going to be a permanent exhibition upstairs in Draper's Bar too. I think perhaps that was mentioned. Yeah, and that's the one that really charts the kind of design and architecture of the city that's that's really what yeah. they're looking at so uh I, I had actually thought about approaching them for the permanent home actually but i mean you're just getting around to thinking about that i am actually involved with charter house so i do know some of the people that are working with coventry historic trust so Master, you might want to talk to jeff wilcox you probably know him he's probably a member of this group is he um he jeff, wilcox. jeff wilcox What's yeah now he works at um, Coventry University, but he's on the board of Historic Coventry and he's very involved in the Draper's Bar, but also with the renovation of Draper's Hall. Um, okay, well, I'll email you, Shanine, because yeah, I can't scribble it all down. And you can give me okay. All the leads, that would be really good. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you to everybody. Um, I think we're running low on questions, so yeah. unless anyone's got a... Peter, do you want to... Yes. Um, yeah. yeah um, just, just a quick one, really. Um, yeah, I was, I was thinking as you were talking, Shanine, about um, the Drapers um, venue uh, and the exhibitions and all that sort of thing that's coming here. Um, and, and I went on to think more about. Um, I suppose this is a people question, really. Um, 
right, quite rightly, you're focusing the year very much on, on people coming here and moving to Coventry. But I wondered whether there was any place in that year for some of the people um, that Coventry has given to the world, if you like. And I suppose the first thought was, was for instance, Frederick Gibbard, who was the most prominent uh, post-war British architect, grew up in Elston. Um, and you might include Sir Henry Parks going back another century ago, obviously Philip Larkin, there's all, there's all sorts of people that the city has given to the world, uh, you know, in expatriates, if you like. And I wondered if there was anything, any reference to, to them at all that you could work into uh, some of the things you're doing. We are looking at some of those, um, you know, really big names, I suppose, uh, that have come out of the city and how we integrate that into the storytelling. Um, we've been having a discussion actually with Mark about Philip Larkin and how we, you know, how and whether we, we include uh, any storytelling about him right now. But, um, but, but you're right, there's some amazing people. And I think, I think what we'll find is that, that key people will come through key bits of storytelling. So I think one of the reasons I wanted to do that storyboard is so that we could start to really think about who we need to be talking about through the year and when we talk about them in relation to programs that we're doing. Um, and it's a conversation I'm having, having with Carol as well at Historic Coventry because they're going to be doing a lot of this as well. Um, and we're all in it together. We're all, you know, we're all City of Culture. It's not just uh, the City of Culture Trust. So, um, but, but, but I'll look at that, Peter, and, um, and have a think about how we do that. And I'll come back to you all um, so that you can see how that will, how that will look. Right. Okay. Um, uh, David Fry, is your hand still up or is that from before? <coughs> No, Samantha, the last word. The last word, yeah, the, yeah, the last word to Samantha's friend. Yeah, I, um, I'm concerned that we haven't dealt in any great depth with the history of Coventry, because it's got a fantastic history. I mean, in the 12th century, it was a major ecclesiastic centre, uh, and. Uh, and the, there was a big impact in the area during the uh, Civil War and things like that. And these things, which was everything like that's been glossed over. Now, this, this city, my family came here in 1949, and it was a major, major engineering centre. It wasn't only motor cars, there was aerospace, there was machine tools, there was all sorts of things, munitions, and this was the backbone of the city. And then, about 15, 20 years ago, for some peculiar reason, uh, are those that in power transferred two and a half million manufacturing jobs overseas, which completely destroyed the engineering base of Coventry, other places like it. And now all we've got is, is a university. <laughs> well, that's a hell of a thing as a major centre of employment. We really ought to look at the history of, of, of the working man in this city and establish, you know, where is it going to go next? There is, I mean, there will be a big focus on Coventry's role as a, as a place of innovation, as, as a place of new ideas, as a city of first, that the, all of that will come through. Um, the storytelling, but I, what I would say in terms of the very historic stuff going back to the kind of 12th century is I think a lot of that will be, that storytelling will probably come through the work that Historic Coventry are doing because, you know, the whole story of Charterhouse, there's some extraordinary storytelling that they're going to tell in terms of that ecclesiastical uh, discussion and, and, and kind of, um, what was going on here right back then and 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 the whole founding of the city by craftsmen and as a place of craft the guilds all of that stuff so that's something that i know that they're going to be doing a lot of storytelling around and we'll be capturing that as part of key events that we're doing but um but i think that's that that's probably a, a piece of storytelling that they will focus on more because they can do more detailed storytelling about it, I think. 